Good afternoon and welcome to another session of Cardiac Imaging Agora. In this session, we have the pleasure of having Dr. Leonardo Rodriguez, a good friend, a colleague. Leonardo runs our uh, cardiovascular imaging fellowship program. He's an expert uh, in echocardiography, uh, cardiac CT, and advanced imaging. He taught me a lot, and uh, in this session, he's going to teach us all how to read a step by step a coronary CTA. Leonardo. Thank you well for this opportunity to share with you some of the experience uh, uh, reading this technique. You mentioned to me while I was preparing this that go first step by step, starting with a normal uh, coronary angiogram, just to review the different uh, aspect of this technique. Uh, some of them are critically important. So I'm going to review the importance of image acquisition and quality, coronary segmentation, the analysis and the anatomy and how to grade coronary lesions. What are the uh, proposed formats uh, to review these images and how to go through extra cardiac imaging. I want to recommend all of you to go and read these guidelines. Uh, this is the reference here. This is important because this is a consensus how to interpret these images. It is an additional document in how to record these images. In terms of segmentation, you can see here that this is the proposed segmentation. You have to be familiar with the anatomy of the main branches, the left main and the RCA, but also all the sub-branches because you have to analyze these segments in particular with great details, particularly in those that had uh, coronary uh, lesions. In terms of the assessment, you can do that uh, qualitatively, going from normal to severe and occluded vessels. But also, you can do that uh, in a quantitative way or a semi-quantitative way when you assign a, a percentage uh, of stenosis to the different lesions. You can see here there is a range because these measurements are not that precise. And it's probably better if you, instead of giving a specific number, just give a range of percentage stenosis to one of these uh, lesions. Again, this is part of the same guidelines that I recommend you to review. In terms of how to analyze these images, there are different formats have been uh, proposed and recommended. The most important probably is the axial image review, and we'll uh, show an example. But also, you have to be familiar uh, on multi panel reformations and other modalities, and I'll show some examples uh, in, in this regard. Before you start analyzing, it's important to optimize the images. Sometimes this is the way that the computer will present to the images. You can see that it's very bright. There is no detail at all uh, in, in, the, in the branches, in this case, the, the left main. But if you uh, just uh, modify the windows and level of the imaging, you can see now it's, it's a lot softer. You can see the walls of the vessels. And this is the recommended way to analyze these images, one that you, again, uh, modify the level of contrast and the width and level of the, of the window. This is an example of how to analyze this in, uh, in the axial images. You can see here you go uh, frame by frame. Uh, let me go back a little bit. You, here I'm looking at the orient of the left main and how that trifurcates into the LAD, ramus, and circumflex. You can go again slowly. Uh, you do that very carefully following the trajectory of the vessels. And then now you have the orient of the RCA and then you can uh, go ahead and follow uh, all these vessels to the distal branches. Uh, you soon you'll see the distal RCA here. And later on, if you go to the upper of the images, you see the distal uh, LAD wrapping around the apex. And you do go back and forth uh, each vessels at a time and each sub-branch at a time to look at the different uh, segments. There are other formats. This is the multi plane of reformation, they use uh, uh, multiple oblique uh, planes. And this is an example to show, again, the origins of the right and the left coronary artery, one that I have a plane through the origins of both vessels. Again, this is very important. And on the lower right, and I have an example, this uh, 3D reconstruction, which you don't use for real stenosis, but it's very helpful to see the branches and the trajectory of the coronary arteries. This is an example also uh, using this uh, multi uh, uh, reformation to look at the images. I'm going to look at here at the lower uh, corner on the uh, LAD. You can see how modifying the planes, you can follow the, the whole trajectory of the LAD from the uh, ostium all the way to the apex. And I'm doing that just modifying the different 
uh, angles or, or rotation in, in a different, uh, uh, in this uh, particular frame and then uh, do that on the LED. And you could do that obviously on the LED, on the circumflex and on the RCA. And this is an example of, of the RCA for the same case. You can see here again, I'm going to look uh, in, the, in this corner, the, the, uh, what is the origin of the RCA, and then follow all the trajectory all the way to the distal branches and the PVA here. This is very helpful again, and, and this is used routinely to analyze the different uh, branches. Oops. Uh, and finally here, this is done by the machine automatically. Uh, the machine detect the center line of the of the vessel. This is the LED here, and you have the uh, different short axes, and you can grab this uh, like I'm doing here on the trajectory, and is di displaying different uh, short axes throughout the the length of the LED mid segment and the distal segment. You can see short axes, which are very uh, useful to see the morphology of the plaque and also of the vessel wall. This is the RCA, again, the same technique, when you uh, slowly uh, see these planes and display multiple short axes, again, from base to apex. And finally, the circumflex artery, the same, you will see here, going down, down the circumflex. This uh, yellow square here is uh, where the, this uh, is, is going. I go back and look at the bifurcation of, of a diag of a OM here and then again, go all the way to the distal branches. And finally, I think this is a, a other format, which is the maximum intensity projection. This is again, a, 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 a thick slab of, uh, of slices when the, the, the computer actually chosen the, the maximal uh, intensity. And again, not very helpful for specific lesions, but very nice, you can visualize long segments of, of the artery and see very well uh, all, all, all the segments and, and branches again. And finally, this is very nice for, for pictures, but not very helpful for specific uh, anatomic lesions. You can see very well the origin of the right and the left is very nice to display fistulas, for instance, or anomalous origin of the coronaries. And again, very nice to see the different branches, uh, the, the ramus or the diagonal. And this is uh, again, uh, rotating the image, and you can see here the RCA very well, and the distal branches. For the report, this is also only a, a guideline. Uh, different labs report uh, this uh, differently, but in general, this is included in the report. One is the indication for the test. It could be chest pain, but it could be just a suspicion of anomalous coronary or fistulas. The technique that is used, uh, sequential or prospective uh, uh, gating or retrospective gating, this is usually mentioned here. And then the quality, uh, the most common problem is uh, usually uh, motion artifacts. And uh, again, sometimes in patients that are very obese, the, the, the amount of contrast is, is you know, very good. And then you find the, indiv uh, you, the findings, the individual coronaries, you always mention the origin, and then which is the specific anatomy for these particular patients. And if the patient has a coronary disease, you go and describe each of the lesions in terms of morphology and severity. And finally, the extra cardiac findings. In this particular example, the patient has a, a thick mitral valve, but often you will find incidental lung nodules and other pathology that needs to be mentioned. And you have to put in the conclusion. And finally, in this case, uh, if the coronaries uh, were normal, uh, both in origin and anatomy. Uh, so this is basically a, in a very fast way, uh, how is the process of analyzing systematically and I have to emphasize that you have to do systematically, uh, artery by artery, branch by branch. Uh, otherwise, you'll miss uh, significant findings. Thank you, Leonardo. I just have a couple of questions. This is fantastic. And I'm sure we will have you very often on this uh, video cast just to explain to us. Uh, we'll move from simple to more complicated. So in your, in your experience and, and uh, the two, like at least for me, the nightmare scenario, because I don't read these, but I read nuclear, is the extra cardiac findings. What do you think it would take for a, for a cardiologist like you and I uh, to, to at least master or not miss very important findings there? And how do you recommend we overcome that limitation? 
So that's a very important question. Of course, is the, is the usual, as you say, nightmare, no? I'm going to miss a, a lung cancer in this particular patient or, or another uh, time. Uh, first of all, I think it's a matter of, of, of numbers and volume. I mean, you have to see a lot of normals uh, in order to uh, identify abnormalities. Secondly, is uh, again, being systematic. The same way that you are systematic looking at the coronary arteries, uh, the aortic valve or the mitral valve or the ventricle, you have to be very systematic in the way that you approach the extra cardiac findings. And again, each individual may have a different ways to do that, but the best way to do that is, is go axially. So you start on the neck, look at the neck and the, the normal anatomy, for instance, the thyroid gland, and then you move down, go to the lungs, one lung and then the other, and then go to the mediastinum. And if you develop in your, in your mind or in your template a way to analyze each of these uh, segments uh, separately, then I think the chances that you will find normalities is, is, is larger. So you have to analyze the mediastinum, again, the lungs, neck, and then the, uh, the abdominal, the, the partial abdominal view that you have. Secondly, you have to maybe go to a course or read about it. I think uh, finding nodules in the lungs uh, is sometimes is difficult. Remember, this is a couple of millimeters sometimes, or three millimeters. So if you scroll too fast, it's only one or two slides. And then uh, you have to hopefully have a mentor that can help you to analyze uh, these extra kind of findings. So I think just to summarize, this requires time uh, and requires to work together with a person with experience at least for the first three to six months. Okay, thank you, Leonardo. And uh, we'll see you very soon on this podcast. Thank you for your time. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for your uh, invitation and uh, I hope we'll see you soon. Bye.